And we're live. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to my swim talk. Um, yeah, I'm happy to, to be back. I want to start out by sending out my apologies for past Thursday. Some of you might hear about within my voice that I'm still not at 100%, but I was pretty sick. My, my son was pretty sick and my wife was out of town. So my hands were kind of cuffed there, but we're back. We are going live twice a week from now on to finish strong in our little um, uh, Ironman swim training series. And <clears throat> after that, we have some other stuff coming up. And for that, I depend on you guys. If you have any suggestions, I'm always open for that. I actually kind of depend on it because from past experience, what I would like to talk about is not necessarily what you guys may need. So feel free to comment anytime and let me know what you guys want to hear and have a chat about. With that being said, let's hop in our um, little introduction that we always have, where I talk to you just for a brief second who I am for those who are tuning in for the first time. Um, again, guys, I'm not doing this to um, to tell you guys how awesome I am, this is just to um, verify that um, <laughs> the guy talking here has actually done some things in swimming and knows what he's talking about. And I think it has to be done. I mean, those are things that I accomplished and I think it would be kind of silly to not mention that. Um, so I won international medals in pool and open water swimming, broke three German records, 38 medals at German nationals, NCAA All-American for the Florida Gators. This is going to come into today's stream is going to be a big topic um yeah alumni of class of 2006 swam with guys like ryan lochte swam under coaches like greg troy anthony nesty martin will be all coaching legends in the world of swimming uh coach sebastian keenle in swimming from 2012 till 2015 alongside his other coach lubo spielek and was a very successful time um, for him in his swimming by far the best results he's ever had in swimming coached uh, Andreas Waschburger to his world record in the English Channel this past summer and I built up many many elite swimmers from youth level to German elite and even to international elite winning some international junior medals and also starting at the big boys um, European and world championships okay that being said Your air side is not on. What does that mean, Aligun? You are, oh my on air. Good point. Good point. Boom. There we go. We are on air. Thank you so much. Okay. Um, what's coming up on this channel? A little a bit of an adjustment. We're going two weekly live streams from now on, as mentioned in the intro. We're going Tuesday and Thursday at 9:30 p.m. Central European time. We are focused on teaching rather than entertainment, but as always, I will do my I will be doing my best to keep you engaged, share some stories and all that good stuff. My goal is to make it as easy to understand for you guys as possible. We have usually one fixed topic to start with, and then we can go freestyle from there if you have questions. And my number one goal is you a better distance freestyle swimmer especially for your ironman swimmers out there i think this kind of stuff is much needed i've seen plenty of swim programs even of world champions professional triathletes who with all due respect made very little to no sense to me and i think there's lots of room for improvement and i'm going to try my best to fill that void once again everything i'm saying is just stuff that worked for me and for my athletes, this is by no mean, by no means the only way. And like I said, I'm just trying to help. I hope you can live with that. Um, upcoming topics. Today we're talking about short rest sets. And in my opinion, this is one of the single coolest way to get in fast, uh, to get in fast, to get in shape fast for distance freestyle swimmers. Really cool stuff. I don't see this done in Germany at all. I still see it done where it comes from, that being the University of Florida with Coach Nesty. I have recently seen a YouTube clip about how the Gators are training these days. 
Um, just to tell you who's swimming in this group, um, Bobby Fink is the Olympic champion in the 800 and 1500 freestyle. Katie Dadecki is the <laughs> Olympic champion in the 800 freestyle since ever I can almost think. I mean, the first time she won was 2012, 16, 21. She's going for her fourth. So this is a very, very strong freestyle and especially distance freestyle group. And they're still doing this kind of stuff. In this video, I saw Katie Ledecky go 100s freestyle on a 105 send-off uh, long course meters, which is absurdly insane, absolutely crazy. Um, goes to show what the human body is capable of. I never thought that I would see a woman in my lifetime that is capable of doing, I think it was eight 100s on 105 in training, but she did it. So that's gonna raise the bar for everybody. And yeah, I'm convinced they're doing amazing work. I'm a great fan of the Gators. I may be a little bit biased because I was a Florida Gator myself back in the day. I, I love the coaching staff and I love the program. And it's I think it's always great to have insight to what these people are doing because it is producing Olympic medals since the past 40, 50 years and counting since the 70s and the 80s. And it, it really is, in my opinion, one of the premier if not the premier swimming program in the world and i'm going to try my best to share what i learned from my time there between 2001 and 2006 okay and today is going to be such a thing so stay tuned this is this is good stuff um what is short rest what is a short rest set for ironman swimmers or for distance swimmers in general and i want to go back to a little bit of history um, back in the day talk as we see it's almost 20 years which is crazy because it feels like yesterday but that's how that's how life works time flies by and yeah back in the day coach nesty was our was our coach funny thing is that the post-graduation group the professional group where right now swimmers like caleb dressel um katie ledecky and even bobby fink are training that i was with scott kaufman and ricky monastery actually the first athletes that made up this this team. This didn't exist back in the day. Back in the day, you swam college, and once your four years of college swimming were over, you were done. Most of the people would quit, but there wasn't training offered. And Coach Nesty took the time back in the day for us three, who were fifth year seniors, so we had no eligibility to race for the University of Florida anymore, and he took his own time and coached us, which I appreciate so much. I cannot say enough good things about Anthony Nesty. I think he, he is, in my opinion, just such an amazing coach that it's I don't he's the perfect coach that's that's my opinion I think it there's there's never been a guy ever again who I swam for who I cared so much to swim well for my coach as well for myself when I was racing and he has a great ability to really motivate and push the athletes and be very strict on the one hand, but be very cool and almost like a buddy on the other hand. It's very tough to explain, but he does it to perfection. And once again, cannot say enough good things about this man. He's an absolute legend and I'm very happy to know him and to yeah to call him a friend of mine. And <clears throat> he was coaching us back in the day. If the set was made by him or by Greg Troy, I'm not quite sure. So I don't really want to give anybody credit for it because I don't want to mix these things up it was done by anybody but coach nesty was coaching us and i was swimming with ricky monastery and scott kaufman both uh ricky is from venezuela um a legend over there he's coaching as well right now scott kaufman was an american open water national team swimmer i think he was a national champion in open water swimming for the united states as well he represented his country during world championships ricky did all that stuff also he was also multiple time olympic um participant and yeah, we called it the Monday morning set because it always happened on Monday morning at 6 a.m. in the Florida Gator outdoor pool. <clears throat> and um, yeah, the idea is to be, it was scary, but amazing each time. Every time on Sunday afternoon evening, I was I was nervous. I really got to say I was nervous. I, I, was, I made sure I was in bed by 9.30 p.m. And... Then we get then we got after it as as Coach Nasty like to say to guys we're getting after it yeah we got after it that's all, that's that's for certain and um, that being said Katie Ledecky is probably laughing about what, what what we did twenty years ago but that's another story uh, and yeah the idea is to push your to athletes to the limit with challenging starting intervals 
and it's still done at UF today. Like I mentioned in the YouTube video, you could see it. And I'm obviously still doing it also. Lots of my coaching program <clears throat> that I'm doing with my athletes and also the stuff that I'm offering for you guys, um, for the um, I, uh, age group Ironman athletes is based on what I've learned back in the day in my time at Florida. So what am I talking about? Drum Drums are rolling. Okay, ready? Go. Here we go. <clears throat> so the infamous Monday morning set that we used to do. It was very simple. We did a warm up. Six o'clock on the dot, we jumped in the water with 24 times 50. 12 times pull, 12 times swim. I really can't imagine it like it was yesterday, even though it was almost 20 years ago. I still remember what it feels like to dive into the pool early morning, nervousness and all that. And then the set went as follow. 100 pull on 115, 100 swim on 110. 200 pull on 230, 200 swim on 110. 300 pull on 345, 3100 swim on 110, 400 pull on five minutes, 4100 swim on 110, and so on and so forth, all the way to 900 pull at 1115 and 9100s at 110. This came out to 10.6k, long course, 6am till 8am Monday morning, and you were cooked after this. The week was almost a success already. And Ever since I came up with countless variations for my athletes to um, to come up with new new variations of that, and this was the single biggest improving year of my entire career, despite being out for eight weeks, only kicking because my shoulder was injured. And that goes to show this is a very 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 good way to swim. I know that a lot of German coaches disagree with it. <laughs> I guess in their um, scientific approach, it, there's no not really a place where they can put it into that kind of training. And unfortunately, that's a, a German thing. If it's not scientifically correct, there are lots. I'm not saying everybody, but lots of coaches say, no, nope, cannot be done. It's not correct enough. And I'm the kind of guy, I'm going to talk in my normal language. I don't give a shit. I do whatever works and I do what the best people in the world are doing. And I'm just fine with that. Okay, and that's my approach. Sometimes I bang heads with some of these guys, but again, I couldn't care less. This I think this is a great way to get into shape very, very fast. And I think you should absolutely implement that into your training routine also. <clears throat> By no means should you go out there and do 10.6K, please. I will provide a training plan for you as always towards the end of the slide in the presentation. But yeah, use your imagination. It should be scary. It should be long, but it shouldn't kill you. Okay. Um, general thoughts sound like a broken record, but it should be scary. And the major stress of a training um, session like this one is the complete depletion of your glycogen storage. So you need to make sure to refuel fast. <clears throat> I mean, as you can imagine, <clears throat> there's not going to be much lactate involved because you're going fairly high um, intensity for 10K and that by definition, nobody can even stay at the um, anaerobic aerobic threshold for 10K. It's not possible. So your lactate, if I was sure if you were to measure your lactate levels, you would be around 2.5 maybe, maybe even less. Okay, so that's not the issue that makes you tired. What makes you tired is the continuous stress <coughs> on your muscle and the depletion of your um, glycogen storage. I love that we did this every single morning for weeks at a time. I mean, it must we must have done that at least six times, seven times, eight times. I don't even know. Lots of times. And that gives you an ability to compare your past results to, um, to what you're doing in the moment and I think it gives you an idea of if you're improving and how you can improve okay um, what do you need to keep in mind I like to get it out of the way in the beginning of the week I think it sets the tone for the week I think it implements right away that we are doing that this is a solid week we already got one good training out of the way and we got the ball rolling and we just need to maintain that's the way I like to do it that's the way I used to like it as an athlete that's the way I like to do it as a coach right now with my <clears throat> age group athletes as well as with my competitive swimmers and yeah sleep well and come ready be ready 
if you're one of those younger guys, this is not a night where you should be playing Fortnite until three in the morning. You should be in bed. You should be ready to go because this stuff is tough. Mentally, physically, everything. You will be pushed to your limits. Okay, that's the coach's job to make sure that these starting intervals are so tight that you're thinking, oh my God, this guy's crazy. How am I possibly supposed to make this set? If that's the, the thought that you're getting when you're reading these trainings, then you're on the right track. Okay? Um, make it tough and make it count. Don't hold back. This is a great set to empty the clip, to empty the tank, to go for it. And yeah, adjust the starting intervals to stay scared. You can see how Anthony Nesty adjusted over the years. Um, I mean, obviously, guys like Bobby Fink and Katie Ledecky are levels above what we used to be back in the day. We're now talking Olympic champions. And therefore, he adjusts from 110 to 105. <clears throat> and I wouldn't be shocked if a guy like Bobby Fink has 100s with a 100 send-off in there every now and then. I don't know how many he can do, but I, I know Coach Nesty and I know they like to push the limits. I wouldn't be shocked whatsoever. Okay, So keep pushing the limits and see what's possible. How many times per week should we do such a set? <clears throat> Easy answer. I think once is plenty. <clears throat> if you are going that, that much volume, okay? If it's a 9K, 8K, 9K set, once is fine. If you're keeping it in a 2 to 3K range, like the set that they have done in Florida now, I think you can maybe do two, two, maybe three also, if you like that. Um, like I said, again, this is not a set necessarily that makes you super fast. Um, but, I mean, it depends. You know, if you make it shorter, obviously you can keep higher quality and you're going to build up lactate then. Okay, this is a completely different set. If you're shortening the volume from 9K, you're doing a completely different training than you're doing it when you're doing like 1.5 or 2K or even just 8 100s like Hedy Ledecky did. It's a completely different thing. <clears throat> but yeah, it's just interesting to use the starting interval almost in order to force your athletes into a certain speed. And that's something that I found is done in the United States a lot. And that's something that I found that is in Germany done next to never. With all the coaches that I swam for in Germany, and one of them was an amazing coach, was Stefan Lurz, one of the best at his time while he was still coaching, never done that. Still a very successful group, but never done that. Okay, in America, it's common practice to use starting intervals to push the athletes. Um, and yeah, like I said, it's not a threshold set if the volume is there. It can turn into a threshold set very quickly if you lower the volume and you keep the intervals tight. For example, 8 times 100 with 5 to 10 seconds rest, best average is a great set to do maybe... <clears throat> two weeks out, one and a half weeks out of your major competition if you're a long-distance freestyle and your main event is the 800 freestyle. Great way to get the last um, the last bit of work in, but completely different thing, okay? So I don't want to go into detail because it's not what we're talking about here today. Okay, and then I want to show you one training plan from my membership program right now. Um, I always do it like this. Each month, I repeat the exact same set three times. The fourth week is usually recovery, and then we start over with a new set in the next month. So here, 100 warm-up, then very short warm-up, 12 times 50, 20 seconds rest, 12 times pull with a snorkel, 2 times kick, 4 times swim. And then we're going straight into the set. And <clears throat> as you can see here, I like to work with a 400-meter test result. So everybody in the membership swims an all-out 400. We get a result and we work with that to then um, have the athletes being able to calculate their own starting intervals based on their 400-meter test result. I think that works really well. In this case, it's 2 times 200 pull at one half test result plus 30 seconds. <clears throat> Into translation, that means if you swam a 400 meters in 5 minutes all-out, 200 meters would be 230 plus 30 seconds. Your starting interval for those 200s pull would be three minutes. 230 plus 30 seconds. So when three minutes are over, you need to go again. And then 200 swim at one half test plus 30. 
tougher already because pulling is obviously easier than swimming. Um, and then 200 swim at one half test plus 20. This should be generally pretty tough. And then we do an easy 200 in there to catch your breath. This is something that you can do that you don't have to do. I generally like to do it with my triathlon group because they are not pure swimmers and I don't completely want to crush them. But you don't need to do this. Obviously, in our set, we did not have anything to catch our breath. <clears throat> but you can, like I said, you can have multiple variations. The sky's the limit of your imagination. Just keep in mind that you want to be picking the intervals in a way that it challenges you if you do your training plans for yourself or if it challenges your athletes if you're a coach. 100 loosen and that's that um, general feedback from the athletes they tend to like these sets a lot and number one time goes by really quickly so you get a great workout in a very time effective manner that's number one distance guys tend to like to be in that threshold just below threshold state that's just something that long distance athletes feel very comfortable and happy in you know it feels like they're getting warm that they're getting work done at the same time it's not super painful where just your whole body is aching so in general a distance guy really gravitates toward that's towards that intensity and feels happy there and the last thing that i really like about these sets is that you cannot mess up and what I mean by that, if you start out too fast in sets like this, you're going to pay the price and you may fall off interval <coughs> as the set progresses. And what is so good about that is that lots of you age group athletes, even the better ones, are really struggling with pacing in competition. And you can learn lots and lots and lots of information about yourself in sets like this. Because if you look at this, the main set is a 4K set in length which is just about the same as what you're going to swim in your Ironman race and you really get to know your body in a set like this if you're forced to swim at a very high intensity you get you have to learn to be comfortable under stress and that's exactly what you have to be able to do in competition also you have you cannot just go there and be in a comfort zone you won't be in a comfort zone because if you are in the world championship um, event like in Kona the gun goes off you're going to be uncomfortable people are going to swim fast they don't drive all or fly all the way around the world to Kona to have an easy day out on the bike and in the water and on the run that's not going to happen they try to win everybody's there to win some are there to finish but most of the people are there to win all the age groupers also so you need to get comfortable in uncomfortable situations and that's also especially true in the pros because lots of professionals there's so much room to improve and I'm not saying that by being, by being disrespectful, I respect these athletes a ton. They put a ton of work in. The overall performance is great. But just from a swimming point of view, I think there's lots of room for improvement in this swim. But I'm going to do a separate video about that some other time. Also about tactics, positioning and all of that. Good Lord. Some of the stuff that I saw there, I was actually quite shocked. But that's, again, a topic for another day. And yeah, that is basically what we're going to talk about today. Um, yeah, I hope everything is still fine. Um, if you guys are still here or if somebody's here, please, if you have any questions, you can do so now. Um, you can ask anything you like. And as always, like, share and subscribe. It helps a ton. I'm going to do my best to be here all the time. And yeah, go train. But now back to the question. So first questions are coming in from Siggy. If I fall off the pace, should I do a break, rest or continue with lower pace? That's the catch on this one. If you fall off pace, you're going to do your best. You're just going to keep on going straight. At Florida, if you fall off your pace, it's your problem. You're too slow. You got to swim straight as fast as you can. So if you're off pace, it turns into an all out. <laughs> do the best as you can. Um, finish the set kind of thing. This is how this works. 
that's why I was scared. I mean, if I just, when I, when I, <laughs> when it doesn't work anymore, I'm just going to be like, oh, all right, I'm going to finish easy from here. That's not how this works. And that's not how Anthony Nesty works either. There's an expectation <clears throat> that if you're a Florida Gator, there is quite a high expectation that you are there to perform and that you take pride in your work and that you are giving it your best. That is just the way it is. If you sign up to this program, it's an honor to be in Gainesville and to be able to train there and you it's expected out of you that you're going to be there to to get your work done um Aligun is asking <laughs> is there a pdf to understand the cryptic um to understand the training plans there's no way to understand the the way the approvations and all that um, i mean basically what you can do what everybody should do Guys, seriously, this costs you absolutely nothing. And I really, really think that I'm providing great value for absolutely free. You don't even have to give your, your, your payment details, nothing. All you have to do is sign up. You can go to www.amazinguniversity.com and sign up for one free week of training. My Freestyle 101 course is in there where I'm going probably like 45 minutes talking about freestyle technique. I'm giving you some some pointers on what equipment is good so you don't buy trash and um, i also have training plans in there and there is um, a complete video of about five six seven minutes in length where i am going over everything you need to know so <laughs> if you don't do that i don't know what to say you kind of deserve whatever happens to you <laughs> i'm just going to be straight up honest because it's absolutely free you can check it out. You can understand all that stuff. And it should, at the very least, if you do nothing else, give you um, a few ideas on how you can structure your own training. Because you're going to see lots of that stuff that we've been talking about in the last weeks in just that one training week. There's four trainings in there and you're going to see a little bit of everything. Not everything, but most of the stuff that we've talked about. <clears throat> and also, it's not just one week of training that fits everybody i even included three different levels so if right now you can swim around 2 to 2.5k you swim level one if you can 3 to 3.5k level two and if you're one of the more serious boys or girls out there you can do level four with about 4.5k so i really put some work into that that's not just some some shit pdf that most people send i'm not saying shit is bad there are some really good pdfs that are out there but it's not just a pdf there's a lot of work that went into that one week of free training and i would really love that i if i could help you with that okay like i said no payment nothing it's just completely free you can sign up for my newsletter which i would really appreciate it would be smart if you do it because just by signing up if at any point you would want to purchase any of my coaching you automatically already get 10 percent off just by being on a newsletter okay and don't worry i'm not one of those guys who spams you full with newsletters every day i should Maybe I will one day, but I'm not. You're going to get a newsletter, hopefully two to three times a week, but usually like one time a week. And um, Sputnik is asking, if you only swim three times a week as a triathlete, would you would one sprint, one threshold, and one long duration session be a great idea? By the way, thanks a lot for your help and videos. I appreciate it a lot, Sputnik. If you are <clears throat> swimming three times a week, I would probably do one of the short rest sets. That's probably the biggest bang for the buck that you can get. Sprint. I would not add any sprinting. I mean, sprint you can do towards the end of the session, four times 50 with a little bit of speed work. Um, but again, get the free week of training. You're going to see it. And then I would probably do one interval training session. Um, you can watch the video about that on my YouTube channel also. And then depending, I would probably do strength. I would probably do short rest, interval training and strength training. That's what I would do. <clears throat> Leading up towards your race, when the weather allows it, I would add once per week a straight wetsuit swim where you go to the open water and do a long aerobic heart rate 22 to 24 wetsuit swim. So you get adjusted to what it feels like to swim in a wetsuit. You get adjusted to swimming in open water, which can can be quite stressful for some people. And you don't want to be showing up for your competition unprepared. Okay, but those would be my three things. 
Short Rest, Strength, Aerobic Interval Training. <coughs> Sorry for my coughing, my throat is still not 100%. Um, Anya says, at test plus 30 means you should swim test pace and have 30 seconds rest. Um, would that be the best case? Mm, I think you would be going very fast if that would be happening. <clears throat> so Anya is right. At test pace plus 30 is you, that's how you calculate your starting interval. So let's say you swam six minutes in a 400 meter test divided by four. That gives you an average pace of 130. And if your interval is um, one, it's 130 plus 30, your starting interval would be two minutes. If you were able to hold 130 in that, you would be doing a good job. You are, you would probably be in your aerobic threshold zone. So you're probably getting into that state where the lactate is starting to rise up. Okay, so I mean, for, for most of my athletes, for my competitive athletes, the um, average pace of the 400 meter test is very closely related to that classic four, um, four mole lactate level. If you're into that kind of stuff, like I said, lactate, <clears throat> let's be honest, who, who of us watching here is really working with lactate? And honestly, who really cares? I mean, it's I would say if you imagine a scale from one to 10, you're probably swimming seven to eight. So pretty tough. 10 is this, dead, taking five minutes to even get up. That's a 10. Nine is very, very, very tough. Nine would be if you take the set and try to do the best possible thing you can do. Eight is a strong effort. And that's probably what that will be. Seven to eight is probably your, your test pace. So I'm in the free first week at Swimazing University. Awesome. That's a great choice. I really do think it's a great choice. <clears throat> I, I mean, obviously, I'm, I'm talking about my own stuff here, but I would honestly be very surprised if you find triathlon swim training out there that's on the level that I'm providing. I know that sounds a little bit, <laughs> a little bit iffy if you're talking about yourself like that, but... I just, I just have a hard time imagining that there's stuff out there that's as good as mine. And if you don't think so, try it for yourself. If you don't think that my training plans are more, the time goes by quicker, you're having more fun and you're seeing faster improvement, then let me know and I would do my very best to, to do a better job. But I think that, that it's pretty good. And that's the feedback that I've gotten from in the past. And that's what's still happening now. I mean... Let's take Sebastian Kienle, for example. He, he he never, ever even got even close again to being in the first swim group at the Hawaii Ironman. Never even close. And when he started working with me, he was in the first year when we started, he was five and a half minutes out. The second year was like three and a half minutes out. The third year he was in the first group and then he quit, did it by himself again and went back to being three and a half minutes behind the first group. Those are facts. That's just how it worked. Is what it is, guys. I'm not making this up. This is what happened. Interesting though, when he won the world championships in 2014, he was not in the first group. He was that three and a half minutes behind. It was a positive trend, but he was not in the first group. The year after he was in the first group and he then ended up having not the best race of his life, but it is what it is. <clears throat> so I think that stuff works and yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I'm, ne I'm never really happy to talk about my, my stuff like this, but I've been been too quiet in the past i have to have to start marketing my my own stuff because i really think it's great i really think it's it's a great product and i, I really think i can help you and i'm going to do my very best to help you for free here also for those of you who don't want to purchase or for those of you who cannot purchase please do not hesitate to post your questions give me topics that i should talk about i'm going to do my very best to provide as much value as i possibly can for absolutely free i'm here to help you i really am Okay. And for those of you who want to try it out, try it out. Barbara says, I have tried your free week and she stayed as a member. She loves the training plans. They are really fun and I'm really looking forward every week. That I mean, I, this, this makes me really happy and I'm going to start sharing these kind of 
um, stories soon on my Instagram because thank you so much. Thank you so much for your feedback. Barbara, I, I really love hearing that kind of stuff. And yeah, makes me happy. But it also makes me happy to, to help you guys here for free if you, like I said, if you're not sure, if you maybe cannot afford it or whatever. <clears throat> Again, one more time, do not hesitate to post your question, post your topics. If it's technical stuff, post it. Um, I'm going to run out of topics soon anyways. We can go back here. We have one, two, three, four, five more sessions. This will be done this week. So we only have one and a half weeks to go. A week from Thursday, this is it. This is my last topic. Then I need new, then I need new topics. <laughs> so please let me know what you need. And... I'm going to do my best to provide. <clears throat> okay, but if you do not have any more questions, I try to keep these things about 30 to 45 minutes. <clears throat> we are at 35. And yeah, like I said, don't... Um, Hesitate, try the free week. It costs nothing. Oh, right now also, if you want to hang out and chat for 30 minutes and do me a favor, and I'm going to do you a favor, is I'm going to post my Calendly link in the description once this is posted. And what I'm going to do there is I'm going to ask you questions for 15 minutes. So I get to know you better. I want to know what you need, how much you train. Basically, I'm trying to get information to make my products for you better. It's going to take about 10 to 15 minutes. And in the following 15 to 20 minutes, you can ask me anything you want. You get a little bit of a coaching. <coughs> if you have video footage of you, we can also have a quick look, whatever. The call is going to be scheduled for 30 minutes. And again, also, um, yeah, I don't want to say free because I'm obviously getting lots of value from you also, but I'm very happy to. Yeah, this is for everybody. This is for everybody. You can sign up for free. Sign up for um, the call. And like I said, I'm going to ask you some stuff and then you can ask me some stuff. We're just going to hang out. We're going to have a good time and we're both going to learn some things. Okay, like I said, I'm going to post, I'm going to post this into the description once the video is done. And yeah, I would love to talk to some of you. And Ah, yeah, maybe you can give me also feedback if if you guys would like to see the chat or not. Because, I mean, by now I posted my best times, but I think by now we've seen that and I'm also in the introduction talking about myself. <laughs> and as much as you guys might think I like that, I really don't. I'm. I, we were talked by Coach Troy <clears throat> and he's a very influential guy and I'm very happy that I was there. Um, at Florida that we are not talking. Talk is cheap was always our thing. And that's why I struggled for such a long time with marketing and banging my chest because we were always said, we don't talk, we show, um, we get recognition by performing. And this is great if you're an athlete, but <laughs> if you run a business and nobody knows that your business even exists, not so good. So I, that took me a long time to to kind of to get this to get this thing switched in my head so i really don't i really don't like i'm not comfortable talking about my my results because number one that's what we were told not to do and number two it's also a crazy thing about athletes they're never satisfied with what they've done you know that i'm always thinking man i, I was never uh, Olympic champion and all that stuff. And then I'm sure if you ask Michael Phelps, he looks back and I was like, ah, man, I should have maybe won 28 gold medals or whatever. So you're, ne you're never really happy. And so trust me, I'm, I'm not a fan of doing this, but I, I just have to. Okay, and I'm going to take this off. And I think showing the chat is better overall. Okay, all that being said, once again, I want to thank everybody who was here. Um, it was a great chat, lots of questions. I appreciate all of these questions a lot. I appreciate all the time that you're taking a lot. I'm really, really, very happy if I can help. And if you have suggestions and topics, please feel free to post it in the comments once the video is posted. And 
I will talk to you on Thursday if you want to take the time again. Okay, all the best. Enjoy your swimming and talk to you soon. Bye-bye.